Hello, welcome to The Downside. My name is Joe Marco Cerezi. I'm joined by my co-host. Russell Daniels. Do I normally say Russell Daniels? Yeah, you usually say it. Okay. Not but anymore. No, let's throw it. I fine. forgot for I a like second. I like that, yeah. I, uh, uh, and we're joined today by comedian, uh, writer, uh, uh, star, and fellow innovative client. We're with the same agency. Oh. Uh, please welcome Sarna Garg. Woo! Namaste. Thank you so much for having me. I cannot wait to get started. <laughs> okay, well, this is the downside, so we need something negative to kick off this, this music. No problem there. Do you want me to say something <laughs> negative? <laughs> My whole life, I can like start streaming a whole stream of negativity. How much do you want? I one one something really, really, something really that will bum us out real quick. Yeah, you know, people saying like you should be a good human being, like that's been the thing, has not really seemed to be working. This is the downside. One, two, three. <laughs> downside. You're listening to the downside. The downside. With John Marco Cerezi. I agree with you. It's a sad day. Uh, we're recording this a little bit earlier before the release. Elon Musk just bought Twitter. Oh, I'm yeah. feeling kind of down. Did about it, it happen? Yeah. It did happen. It's great. This so is what happens when you take the New York City subway. Yeah. You, you miss the news. You miss world news. <laughs> yeah, you, you I, come I over you're like, well, Elon Musk wow. is now president of the United States. <laughs> Fuck. <laughs> My train was delayed 10 minutes and everything changed. Uh, I don't know. You know, I, it's not surprising. So you're, you're getting off of it, right? Oh yeah, you know me. I'm 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 moving to Canada. Twitter. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. Uh, it's it's. Uh, well, we'll see what what happens. You know, Trump's gonna go back on. Definitely. It's more. I just read something more of like. But well, he's going back on. That just, happened too. I'm just no no. no I'm just sure that's like one of he's Elon Musk's like first yeah, thing because yeah. he's all. Sure. I read. I basically speech. read some th- some thread from a guy who used to run Reddit, mm-hmm. and it was just like him being like this idea of like just being pro free speech with the internet is it's an infantile notion it's the same way with like facebook it's like you could be pro free speech and then like look at myanmar which is now uh, people who survived myanmar are suing facebook for 150 billion dollars because they showed that that they had hate speech groups and encouraged genocide it's like the 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 idea of like guys just let people say what they want to say yeah. is an oversimplification of like the damage these apps can do, not just to individuals, but clearly yeah. to fuel genocide. Also, you can still say what you want to say on the internet, the wide yeah, internet. Yeah. You can start your right. own blog, you can do your own thing, but it is like a, 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 a organization or a business can decide if they don't want you to say that on their Of thing. course. You know, especially if it's free, you know. And Elon Musk's last tweet, or like two days ago, it's, it was a picture of Bill Gates with like a little bit of a gut. And it was like, here's a boner killer if you need it. And you're like, oh. that's the head. And we shouldn't be surprised. Look, billionaires have been taking over newspapers, you know, since since the beginning of America. Yeah. But it's just, it feels deflating. It feels, uh, and he's going to be president someday. And I don't know. It, it just Listen, it bummed me out. Let him because no, it, it's not like the others have <laughs> done such a stellar job. Sure. Like, yeah. You know, whatever. Whoever wants the job, take it at this point. Like, yeah. I think someone posted a clip, and it was back from 2020, and it was it was the the press conference where Trump was was talking to like his head of science and was like, you know, maybe we could shine the 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 purple light inside the body to kill the COVID. <laughs> We're looking at that. Yes. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And there's a moment of like this. How can anyone stand for the national anthem at this point? (laughs) It's so, like, that's the insanity of, it's not just, yeah, the president sucked, the government sucks. It's just like, this is the president, and he doesn't understand anything during a crisis. Yes, but I know this is the downside, but I'm going to turn this into a positive for one minute. Okay, Okay. please, yeah. When you have a president like that, do you know how much hope he generates in the whole population? Like maybe I can be president. <laughs> you know, I like I like that that was labeled as a as a, as a positive thing. <laughs> You're like, think of all the losers out there <laughs> who are like, maybe I could do it. Yeah, I mean, he has become the benchmark on don't let anything stop you. Yeah, but that's not a good thing. That's a bad <laughs> thing. <laughs> I don't know anymore because the world, like, look at, listen, you know, oh, but the Ivy League graduates and all have been running the world. Look where we are. Sure. Yeah. You sure. know what I mean? But we're still alive. 
To be fair, we're still here. Hanging yeah. by a thread. Hanging by a thread. Hanging by a thread. Now you were you were, you were born in India. I was born. How's in India's India. political situation? Do you keep uh, do you keep in touch, or you're like I'm uh, not there? No, every day I start the, the news with the Indian newspaper. Really? Every day, of course. It's my home. I mean, it's not really my home. I'm not going back. Like to be clear, but. It's it's like yeah, it's what I'm used to. I was born and raised there. I was there until I was 16. So, sure, um, but isn't part of it like, are you able to watch it with like amusement? Like if I left yes. America, I think I would be like, oh, Elon Musk is president, and he made himself vice president. <laughs> oh, <laughs> what a mess! What a mess! Oh, America, you suck. Yeah. Like do you do you look at it or do you feel passionate? Do you go, oh fuck? The guy. I feel passionate, but I understand that I don't have the right to comment much because I'm not living there. Because a lot of sure. Indian people get very worked up when the immigrants from abroad are like, you do this and oh. you do this. They're like, shut mm -hmm. up, you left. And I get it. That I get that message. So I, I'm amused. I read it out of concern and care. But that's about it. I, I have nothing. Because if you're not on the ground living that reality, you don't really know what's going on. Just like how of much course. news about New York and America. You read the news oh and you're like, God, what yeah. do they say? I, I'll tell you, I had this moment where when we were doing the outdoor shows or whenever I read a stand-up comedy, the New York Times will talk about the stand-up comedy scenes sometimes. Yeah. Right. And I remember when you read it, you're like, this yeah. is so inaccurate. Yeah. yeah. Like, they're just broad generalizations and miss it. And you're like, oh, well, there's no way the news about Yemen is more accurate. Like, I understand they have more right. people on the ground there, but it's just like. Oh, if if you being literally the New York Times and you're yeah. talking about the New York comedy scene and you like say these wrong things, I remember uh, there was a, a review of a play once at the Flea Theater and they talked about they have a lot of casting agents there and I was like casting agents they're yeah. called casting directors yeah. Yeah. no one says casting yeah. agents yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah how did this get through yeah. so so I understand how you get older and you become like that's eh, all bullshit yeah yeah um well re you you came in last minute are you any you okay everything good. Last night, yeah, I came at three thirty-one, and you didn't answer the call. So <laughs> I came. I, I came. didn't mean that as a critique. I didn't mean that as a critique. I meant like, is you're there like, anything surely you want something to share? must be wrong that you're this late. Um, uh, Russell had a birthday. Oh yeah, Happy and I birthday. completely spoiled these. It was supposed to be a surprise, oh. and I don't think of myself as like a can't keep a secret guy. Oh yeah. But I had a thing with Russell where I was like, hey, just so you know, oh my god, I called your 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 wife. Uh, uh, so I just wanted to like work this thing out before I saw her on Wednesday and Russell went, what's Wednesday? And <laughs> I, it you was as seen, if like, you should have seen his face. I would, yeah, I, I was so kind to him. I didn't let on that. I, that I, not at that all. I knew he didn't let but, on that. I fucked it was up so at all. clear. He goes, when I said, what's Wednesday? He goes, Oh, uh, uh, <laughs> no, not Wednesday tonight. Tonight, I was like, "Well, you're not seeing Nicole tonight." And I, and was, I was like, like "Wait, I Nicole's like, not coming to the show. She would definitely never come to <laughs> at the Asylum in New York because Tova. It was, it was, it was the worst. And but, like, it felt like a like if if uh, what I felt inside, I would have been like this. What is so funny? Yeah, that's what it was like. And then what was really funny is that I got home, and I mentioned something to Nicole about you, and Nicole said, "Uh." Oh yeah, blah, 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 when I see him on Wednesday, oh. and she did the same thing, and I go, I go, wait, I go, then she goes, no, not Wednesday, uh, you know, whenever I like, literally the same thing, and I go, okay, so obviously you invited some people Wednesday, that's right. like, and she goes, no, 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 I just was confused, and she tried to really play it off that no, and I was like, in the back of my head, I was like, there's no way I'm not going to see John Marco Wednesday, like, it, like, but it was. Were you disappointed? Were you bummed? Do you wish it had been a full surprise? No, I, I, the thing is, I was always casually, I always thought I would see some people. I had mentioned it to people that, yeah, friends yeah, that yeah. live right next to the place. So I was, I was pleasantly surprised that I didn't think I'd see like Jessica and like other people, sure. like, like Tim and like, I, there was a number of people I, I didn't think I was going to see that I saw. That was very nice. Birthdays. Um, I, I but mean, yeah. a good surprise. It wasn't like, a, it wasn't like, you know. It's not. It's the best version of a of a surprise party that you can ruin because it's not like a huge, you sure, know, big, sure. big, big thing, you know. Um, so the one thing I want to complain about, and I feel like you you know this, where so I was just in Utah. I was at Wise Guys Comedy Club, great mm -hmm. club. I cannot keep telling Uber drivers in New York and Lyft drivers in New York they don't really talk to you. No, oh. and no. I think it's because they're busier. They understand. They're usually People on are in the a phone. rush. They're usually on the phone. Yeah. <laughs> They're playing really, Wordle. I want to say something about that. Uh, there is a thing that happens where it must be part of the Uber culture. 
or like our taxi culture, uh-huh. like there's something that happens where you're like, who in my mind, I'm like, who would you be on the phone with all day? But it must be other drivers, right? Is in my, in my mind, I like, imagine cause because the conversation I'm like, sometimes is so it like, low, it, it, it stops for 10 minutes and then they'll, they'll say something and you're like, Oh my God. Like who <laughs> is talking to me? Like, so it has to be like, almost like a, I, I envision it like a radio, a walkie talkie, yes. like a, like a, like there's like multiple people in a, like a, a, a talking room. Yeah. And like you occasionally weigh in and stuff. Cause it's like, it's it's amazing, but I'm like I can't imagine being on the phone with with someone sure. that and, and engaging in the way that they engage in. But but I don't think they're like the, I I think it's more like old married couples. Mm. It's like the phone is kind of in the background and it's happening, but it's like if I'm in the room with my husband, we don't really talk, and then an hour goes by and I yell about something, and I think it feels to me like that's what's going on. Both oh. people have speakers on. Uh huh. And they talk or they don't talk, but they feel like they're connected. Like you know, yeah. something happens, and they're yeah. like, "Oh, hey, the kid just came in." So the the driver's like, "Oh, hello, yeah." Okay, yeah. I, I just mean, think it's oh. amazing when you don't know, and then like 10, 15 minutes in your drive, oh, he's on, he's on the phone. Yeah. Um, uh, well, that's the new reality though across the board. Like right, wherever you go, you never know where a camera is going to be on. Does live? Sure. I mean, I have kids. They do. Everything they do is on the they get gaming on the computer. Every laptop has a screen. It's wild. You you yeah. you're not unseen anywhere anymore. Yeah, that's Travis Kal- Kalaknik, whoever ran Uber. He like one of the final nails in his coffin. It was something like him with like two like. 19 year olds in the back seat and he was yelling he was fighting with the uber driver the uber driver was complaining about like why don't you pay us and Travis was like fuck you <laughs> oh god um um so yeah allegedly. the new york ones though they don't talk to you they're doing their own thing they're like literally yeah. talking to their fans. so i'm on the road and uh i i'm usually taking uber lifts to the comedy club i don't like to lie it, I, it's something in me uh, gets. A, this is why I can never do like man on the street or like hitting camera stuff. It makes me uncomfortable to lie, but I cannot tell these people anymore that I'm a stand up comedian. Can't. Yeah, no, I can't do it anymore. You got to stop. I it. can't do it. And every time I say to myself, I'm not going to do it. And then they're driving me to the comedy club, why and you they just... go, "What? Who are you seeing at the comedy club?" And I go in my head, me, I'm like, I'm just going to tell them, but I'm going to tell them in a way where I'm looking at my phone so intensely, so intensely. They must think, oh. He doesn't want to talk. Right. And the conversation Gosh. is the same every time. Yeah. How did you get into it? Wow, is that scary? You you tell jokes? And then it's always, it's it's usually the men. It's the first time I've ever wanted a woman driver. Yeah. Okay, uh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Where it's the men and they, I can, three, of course it three is. different yes. Uber drivers have said, you know, I saw Jerry Seinfeld said this thing where like Jerry Seinfeld gives comedy advice and no comedians are listening to it. It's non-comedians who are like, hmm, interesting. I'm going to share that with a comedian it's someday just Uber drive, men in Uber the backseat drivers. of my car. <laughs> Seinfeld said it's important to write. Yeah. Mmm, <laughs> interesting. Thank you for that. Thanks, Seinfeld. Have you thought about just like launching proactively, like bef- right in the beginning of the conversation, just telling what you do, why you do it, like how you got started? Like, just, just like, like one of those, like, I'm a stand comedian. Yeah. Yes, it's scary. What's yeah. scarier is Answering that you're going to ask me that next question? Have, yeah. I, and so I tried like the furthest lie as we were going to the club. Here's the problem is that they have my name. Yeah. If they didn't have my name, I would say for a moment I was going to do this. I was going to be like, oh, I'm going to see John Marco. Right. Yeah. My favorite. So on the way there, I said, oh, I'm, I'm, uh, I said, I'm the assistant to the comedian. <laughs> that was the furthest lie I was able to make. Cause I was like, okay, I can answer any tangential questions. But then they said, oh, is this comedian funny? Are they famous? <sighs> And I was just like, and, and I was ready to say your name that I'm going to see Russell Daniels. That, oh my God. <laughs> but then I'm nervous. Yeah. We'll get to the club and it'll say Jamarco Sarezi on the front yeah. and, and they'll be. I'll wait, be... the assistant to the comedian is not a job. And wait, I mean like <laughs> for a stand up comedian at li- like, uh, like. Okay. So, so you, you say to me, okay. Oh, you're going to wise guys comedy club. Oh, who are you seeing? I'm not sure. Just looking for a night of comedy. <laughs> Just you don't have to get it. Okay, you okay. Like, where are you know, from? I just, I, okay, okay. Where where are you from? You live around here in, in uh, Salt Lake City? No, I live out in the east. You live out east. Mm-hmm. So what were you what were you coming here for? Uh, just a night of comedy. <laughs> really? You came all the way to Utah? I'm here for, for business, night. but I have the night off, so I'll mm, just. So what, kind what of business? business do you do? Thank you. Um, I'm a salesman. 
What do you sell? Insurance. Hmm. Have you ever gone where the Uber brings their wife along with them to ask questions as well? <laughs> <laughs> I think insurance salesman is a good lie because I don't imagine what kind there's of insurance? that many. What kind of insurance? Health, you know. Is there money in that? Uh, you know, it's fine. Uh, so it's why don't you drive an thing. Uber? It's good money in Uber. Uh, I just like the hours of insurance, nine to five. I'm home, see you the kids. You can drive an Uber nine to five. <laughs> it's this, very this flexible. Does this employee get a referral code for <laughs> getting people to drive for Uber? <laughs> but the bottom line is like, I, well, every, I don't know what you can say to not encourage conversation if you're, you know. Yeah, it's just like every time I think like, no, this time it'll be okay. And, and, and sometimes they won't. And obviously this is someone who like doesn't have in these cases, they're people who don't have people skills. Cause I'm in the back. I'm either like, yeah. And when I'm like this, leave me alone. And you're like, so what is your comedy about? Yeah. I'm like, how? And I get this anxiety yeah. because I don't have the strength to say, Hey, I don't feel like talking. Yeah. And I feel like a yeah. good person or a strong person could say that. Yeah. And I just can't. Um, no, I know. Uh, yeah, I think I, I try the thing of like, just you're in town and you wanted to catch some comedy. Yeah, I will try that. Yeah. I'm not sure who's on. Do you tell, do you tell? I, 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 could you imagine getting into an Uber looking like this and saying you're a comedian? I said, can you come for my daughter's graduation? Can you get my, because half the drivers, especially in New York, they're all Indian. It was the only tech company, by the way, where the Indian people are at the bottom, which is why the math is never right. Sure. Like three minutes away. No, you're, you're really not. You know what I mean? Like, you really haven't figured out three minutes. But it's always across the street and always 15 minutes away. Yeah. But they look. So I used to even venture saying, oh, I do. I do events. I do. I do event planning. Like I used to. I be uh -huh. Now I just say I'm hard of hearing. I can't hear what you're saying. Really? I just oh. yeah, I, I mean, I don't know what to do because I got, I've had aggressive taxi drivers go, so can you come for my daughter's graduation? Can you perform for 10 minutes? And I'm like, no. So They've I, tried to book you right yeah, then and there? No, but not book. Come for free. Sure. No yeah. Sure. Anything. Yeah, yeah. Like they think, well why, well, why can't she come? What is she doing? She's probably related to us. Yeah. Oh, yeah. that that is wild. So now I just, I'm like, I can't hear you. After the third time, they get irritated. Yeah. You know. Um, well, okay. I'm going to try both these things. I'm going to try hard of hearing yeah. and I'm going to try, I'm an insurance salesman. I think insurance salesman is a good one to kill conversation. Yeah. Cause it's like, what could you, what, what, fall, what like, that's what, what I, old my, life? my, it, I <laughs> feels like it doesn't like, I would have more questions for an Uber driver than I would for an insurance salesman. Do you know what I mean? Sure. Like, sure. like, because they at least have interesting stories about Uber right. driver. Like, hey, like, you ever get any insurance you know, the salesman people passengers? Have gotten, yeah. Like, so I feel you ever like have a comedian passenger and yeah. even famous. <laughs> <laughs> so I just feel like it's like, I feel like insurance salesman feels like the most like, okay, this guy's yeah. probably boring. You know what I mean? Not no offense yeah. to any insurance salesman listening, but I just feel like it wouldn't instill a lot of follow ups. Yeah. What well, if we found out that, like, the whole base was oh, But they might ask questions, like, too. Then they might be like, oh, I am don't have health insurance. And then, then you'll feel really bad. Sure, Because that sure. would be bad to, like... <laughs> I wish there was an option of just, like... You could select. Busy or busy or, or working or shy. So, I mean, shy. I'm gonna, can I flex a little bit? Please. I We haven't had a car, my husband and I, for years in New York City. So I've been living on Uber, you know, to drop my kids off here, there, whatever. It's a lot of, like, this thing, that thing. So I'm an Uber di Diamond member, whatever that means. Really? Wow. I have an option that says quiet preferred. <gasps> no! You can only do that if you're Uber Diamond? I don't know why I got it, but I got it. Quiet preferred. You select it every time, right? Every time. Yeah. I'm like, quiet only. Please, not preferred. <laughs> only. No quiet talking. Quiet demanded. Only. <laughs> I am so curious. Do you, are you like, do you have to pay a membership fee? No, no, no. It's you just like, took so many Ubers? It's like you take, I have three kids who are taking Ubers. The husband who's not allowed to take Ubers, but he sneaks one in every now and again. You know, because we live the Wait, what do you mean? Wait, wait, what wait, is he wait. not allowed to take Why Ubers? Look, wait, he can't spend that kind of money. Like, no. Sure. Uh, he, his That's job. It's got to be tough. The kids are Ubering. Dad, mm. you can't take one. <laughs> his job is to earn the money. My job is to spend it. Gotcha. I got okay? it. Okay. Do you see how that works? Sure. Yeah. But he's no. like, ask the kids, can you take an Uber? I'll do a skateboard. I'll yeah. hang on to the back. <laughs> exactly. 
No, but you know what I mean. Like years we haven't had a car. Like anytime you go to the airport, that stuff adds up, right? Yeah. I don't even know how I became Uber Diamond. It must be something I triggered. But that came with a quiet preferred option. That's amazing. I, I mean, like, I I'm going to look never... into it so hardcore. <laughs> I yeah. can't lose this. Um, well, I, I wanted to. I'm so happy you're here. Um, uh, but one thing I really wanted to, because I always think about it when I see you tell jokes about it. You really never told your husband I love you? No, I would never. Now, I now, would never. No, wow. No, 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 we don't. That's not a cultural no. Okay. Who who have you said I have you said I love you to your kids? No. Never? No. Never, Zarna? Never. Never? No. I, and and I, if I like if you gave me an acting role and said act it out with my husband or kids, I couldn't do it. <laughs> uh, it's it's bizarre to us. Oh, but do you have the word love in 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 the Indian language? Like, yeah. So when but is it used? But we don't use it for just for food? food. 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 Well, what's what's the highest term of affection when you when you tuck your kids in at at night? Yeah, I like, like you. No, you. I like you. Okay, okay. dreams. Listen. <laughs> sleep. You sleep for three hours and then get up and study for the MCAT. <laughs> I will make chai for you. That's the term of India. I will wake up at four a.m. and make chai for you while you study for the M- MCATs. And but that 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 feeling of making the chai isn't it because you love them? No, there is a lot of love. It's not like the love isn't there. The love is there. We just don't say I love you. I lo-. That's not how we. That, yeah. Now, do your kids? Because your kids were born in America. Yeah. Do they feel differently? Do they ever say, Mom, please say I love you? <laughs> no, I, I'm sure they have some feelings about this, but like, I, they're not allowed to get into those feelings. <laughs> That's the other thing they're not allowed to do. See, I, so, I wish my mom was Indian so she had an, I had an excuse for why she's never said it to me. <laughs> uh, but I, if... They must say it to... I, I like... Uh, no, they say it to me sometimes and then I start yelling at them. I'm like, you become American now? Oh. And they're like, but we are American. They were all born in New York. I'm like, you have to forget that. You're an Indian American. I try so hard to keep them grounded in my Indian madness. And they do everything they can to remind me they're actually American kids. Uh huh. You know, so this is a constant battle between us. Do you think you'd ever, because we say love you. Yeah. We say love you. Yeah. Tov and I say love you. Took, yeah. a, took a year. I mean, there's an argument to be made. I, I, I'm very slow. Listen, I, I'm halfway there. When it comes to love, I like to. I, I don't like how it's, uh, it's too much. Too much. I used to, I used to have a bit. I ended up cutting it. I had this in my play, and this is how the culture shifted. Where it was, I, it was like before I was doing stand up, I was just kind of writing stand up within a play, and it was about how much I hated when you brought someone a coffee and they'd be like, "Love you," and you feel like you have to say it say back. Say it back. Yeah. And in, in yeah, the yeah, stand up, yeah. I said it's like being love raped. Oh my and god! And then, and then the culture, like a couple years later, a director was like, "Let's cut that line. I think we uh, we yeah. don't use that word anymore yeah, in a yeah, joking yeah, manner." Yeah, yeah. But it was like being love raped. Uh, uh, yeah, but people can use the the term can get definitely get overused there's a yeah. probably a, a middle well ground. i mean social media i get a lot i love you i'm like who needs love i need likes <laughs> <laughs> don't say i love you follow me bring your friends bring your family that's what i need when facebook added that heart <laughs> option to love you're like no, no what is this no what is all these feelings i mean i believe that the whole it's complicated thing was designed for us indian people we're like we're not really mm, i don't know love that's a lot yeah, <laughs> so it's complicated with your husband. Yeah. Wow, so that's very, very interesting. Uh, I didn't, I didn't realize that that was a, a cultural thing. Um, and I've heard you say Indians and Jews, yeah. we have a lot in common. Like so Russell much. doesn't like us both. Okay. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, but okay, so you were born in India. Yeah. And you were born to money. Money, yeah. Yeah, and then I found a way to lose it all. I call my life as the social sliding life. Wow. You know, people social climb, I slide. Wow. I find a way to like yeah. b- hit rock bottom every time I get something good happens. And in India, you s- I've heard you talk about this. There was not really a middle class in yeah. India. I mean, there is, but it's not, you know... It's a big country, right? A lot of people, like big population. Is there any rags to riches story in India? Yes. Or is it less than America? 
significant. You can't compare to America. America sure. is the is the the landmark for rags to riches. Like if you want to work hard, you're gonna make something happen here. Yeah, ninety nine percent of you that. Hear that to all the poor people listening to oh. this right now. <laughs> oh. You're not working hard enough. <laughs> um. See Kim Kardashian. She figured yeah, it right. out. Right. She, made it. she started off pretty living yeah. in Beverly Hills. Her yeah. family. Yo, yeah, but oh, I think we were joking. Oh, oh yeah. <laughs> Yeah, well, you know, that was I a just, joke example. Okay. <laughs> okay, it's not like she had a custom Rolls Royce at birth. That's like, true. relax That's true. already That's with true. like picking on Kim. Yeah. yeah. It was poor. It was like she had to buy a car like other people do. Mm -hmm. In yeah. India, did, did you ever, was there ever any fear when you were younger? I understand yeah. that you talk about later, but like that you would ever become poor or did it, did you feel secure? I'm always going to be part of this. I thought I was gonna be a part of this, and then I found a way <laughs> to sure. become poor. Yeah, wait, what happened? Were you were you had servants? Uh, lots of servants, drivers. But that's India. Even the middle class in India will have servants and drivers because there's the number of people that need to be employed is sure. so great. And India lives on like domestic help. That's so how the whole country. What did your family do that they had that much money? So my dad had a business and he is a rags to riches story. He really? was, was, he's not yeah. alive anymore, but l he was, he came from nothing, built a business, was very successful. Um, what was his business? Like, you know, he was making the equipment that spins cotton into yarn. Yeah. Like all this manufacturing, like uh -huh. hardcore goes on in India. You know, all the clothes that we wear, all the machines that make those clothes are made in India. Mm -hmm. He was part of that business and 40 years ago. So he built his life, but he was an Indian man, you know, like very conservative, very, you know, believed what he believed. I was the youngest of four. Three of my siblings were arranged uh, into marriage by him. And I was the only one who grew up. It was, see, this is what affluence does in the rest of the world. You start watching Hollywood wherever you are. Mm. You have access to Archie's comics. You have access to Three's Company come and knock on my door. You know what I mean? I, yeah, I don't know if I've ever seen Three's Company. You've never watched Three's Company? I've never seen an episode, but I, I know the reference. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. What what year Wait, was that the most Growing Pains, uh, growing Family Ties. You've I saw Growing Pains. I know shows? a little bit of these shows. But it's a little before my TV time. Yeah. No, I grew up watching that stuff in yeah, India. Yeah, yeah, Okay. Because when you're that rich, you get bootleg copies of everything. Mm -hmm. And it was bootlegs. It's not on TV anywhere. No, no, no TV. It was like bootleg VCR. You know, you oh, had to wow. like pay a guy to bring the thing and bring the thing. And then... Was the quality it. good or was the no, quality shitty? No, it was the worst. Somebody was sitting and recording a copy of out of their TV here. Yeah, yeah, Nothing yeah. Nothing about it was real. But you were so desperate for the story that you were like, you'll watch anything. Like yeah, the thing sure. broke up. You prayed to God that the whole episode was recorded. Sure. It was a whole thing. But what the thing I lived on was Archie's comics. You got those all over the place. I've read a little bit of Archie's. Have you ever read Archie's no. comics? They're kind of fun. Yeah. They're so, oh my God. That was America for me growing up. Okay. And, and in Archie's, you know, like no one was getting married at 16. Like everybody sure. was dating and people were kissing each other. And I uh -huh. was like, wait a minute. Why don't I have this? Like, <laughs> yeah. Now, so how old were your siblings when they were uh, married off? Like, my sister was 17. My brothers were like 19, 20. And because I've been witnessing some of this because my, my girlfriend, uh, uh, Orthodox Chabad community, and, and her yeah. younger sister is the one who's still like really practicing. Mm -hmm. So I've seen, I think we've talked about it, where her resume, essentially, yeah. that the rabbi gets. Yeah. And it's, it's eerily similar to an acting resume. Yeah. Yeah. There's the education. Yep. And and so in in India, it's like, is there a matchmaker? Is that like a job? Yeah, Full absolute. on profession. Full on. And real professionals do it. Like It's like they take their job very seriously. More men or more women? Mostly men. But okay. because it's a more social job, women are involved somehow. Like even if they're not the matchmaker, they're like the matchmaker's mole. Sure. You know, mm -hmm. whose job it is to go out into the community and seek out the new eligible people or what oh. the buzz is about. Like, oh, is she smart? Is she can she cook? And <laughs> whose <laughs> who's input First, does cooking matter though? If there's all these, if there's all these servants, it matters because it's an indication of how domesticated the woman is. Got it. Got it. it they don't the actually. The better she can need, cook, the worse she can read. 
And read. Don't read. Don't read. Don't read. <laughs> no, no, no. Reading, that's a problem. That's where all the problems start. When the women start reading. Yeah. So, so did you start so what age would did they did you have a meeting with the matchmaker no no it didn't it, okay so it wasn't planned to be that way my mom actually passed suddenly mm. uh, but unexpectedly and Went how old were you i was just under 15 and she uh, got sick and passed within two weeks wow what, what happened so she uh contracted hepatitis from uh, uh, contaminated water Contaminated water. Yeah, just is this back then. was it? Is it common? It's it was common back then, and and if you didn't catch it in time, it was fatal. Wow! Had it been caught, she would have probably lived, but it wasn't caught in time. Is it like? Did she feel sick and didn't go to the doctor? Exactly. Soon enough? She was getting ready for my brother's wedding, and she was busy with the wedding preparation. Or whatever. Sure. So she lost herself kind of in that. And by the time she realized it was, it, she was. Too oh, old. my goodness. And yeah. what, so you're f before 15, you said? Yeah. And do you remember, I mean, that's so sudden. Like, yeah. was it just like she went to the hospital one day and didn't come back? And didn't come back. And it was like shocking. And also India, it's like no one talks to the kids. Like here you talk to your kids. How do you talk to your kids? Here they make movies for the kids. TV for the kids. There's none of that in India. Mm. Everything is like grown up stuff and like the kids find out the way they find out. Yeah. So I was like, I didn't even know that she was gonna, gonna die. Like no one told me. I yeah. was the youngest and the adults were all busy managing this sudden situation. So I was at home every day wondering when she's gonna come back. Wow. Do you remember who told you? Yeah, I mean, in the end, it was my sister who was visiting from America, my my adult sister at the time, much older than me. Did was it delivered with the weight that it deserved? Like, did she no, say no, no? And it's not. She just was like, "Hey." Well, she was in shock too. Sure. She was yeah. in shock too, and again, the whole. You know how we talk to kids here in America, like, how are they going to take it? Yeah. Let's be easy. There's none of that back home. Mm. Like this is the news. Yeah. Yeah. No. That's were, it. Were you <clears throat> comforted by, did you have religion then? Like, I was never very religious. Sure. And I was too young. At the time, my biggest preoccupation was like, what am I going to do? I mean, I didn't realize that her death would then mean the next day, my dad saying, you know what? You need to get married. I'm done parenting. Oh, my God. Yeah. Because wow. he was, he broke too. Like, you know, this is it. He wasn't a bad guy. He just, the shock of something like that got all of us. Yeah. And, and he, you know, he was just tired. I think he just broke and he's like, just it was married. So it was the next day. The next day. Yeah. Oof. I think he was in a state of shock too. I mean, honestly. Yeah. Yeah. And was 14, you said your sister was married off 17, right? 18? Yeah, 17. So 14 was still like young. Was that young to do it? It was very young. But I think in his mind, if we started the process at just about 15, we'll finish it at 16, 17. It's still a process, sure. right? Finding the person yeah, and the yeah, whole yeah. thing. But I was in my mind so against the whole thing because, like, in my mind, I was living an Archie's comic life. Yeah. yeah I was yeah, like, yeah. why are we even talking about this? Like, no. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Now, let me, uh, the, what's the age of consent in India? Okay, I've heard somewhere it's 18, but I, I don't but think. But if people are getting married, it's assumed that, like, yeah. is the consummation of the marriage, like, is that kind of implied in the same way? Yeah. It is in most places. Yeah. And I don't think anybody really knows. Maybe in the urban cities today, people know that there is an age of, of consent and all that. But certainly not 30, 40 years ago. I didn't know. Is the age generally around... Uh, who? So did, did you start going through the process at all? No. The match, you didn't do any of it? No. I, I, so my dad basically said, you should do this. And I, at the time... I said, no, I'm not going to do it. And he's like, you don't have a choice. Yeah, either do it or you leave home. And were you fighting? Did you go, no, were you yelling at your dad? Or were no, you just like, because I'm no. going to be. I said, fine, I leave. I, in my 15 year old, whatever brain, yeah. <clears throat> I thought I'll just have a slumber party with my friends for a few years. And this really yeah. because Archie, because you saw your family do it. Yeah. What do you think was different about you that you were like, no. I like to study. 
Mm-hmm. I loved being educated. Like, I loved going to school. I was that kid who wanted to read. Like, I couldn't get enough reading done. So I knew there was a bigger world out there. I was just not interested in that pathway ever. And my siblings are happily married. So that all turned out fine. My yeah. dad had good intentions. It's just not what I wanted. Did like, you have anyone to talk to about this? Like, so, like any adult figure who said, like, good for you. You should be independent. Or did you no. have friends who felt similar? Like, <laughs> that they weren't going to go that path either? No. No. But, and in fact... Most of my friends were like, are you crazy? He's going to find you the best match. Like, yeah. He wasn't going to marry me off to some toothless, like, 80-year-old man. He would have found, like, a rich son of somebody. Would it definitely be someone older? Like, is definitely that how it works? Definitely older, yes. Like, 20s or, like, 30s? 20s. Maybe high 20s. Sure. Yeah. Ten-year spread is not uncommon at all in an arranged setting. Yeah, which spread. isn't unusual here. Yeah, unless the wife is fourteen. Yeah, yeah. that's that's uh, that's Elvis. We yeah, were talking about the last episode. <laughs> um, so okay, so you, how soon after that do you leave? And I left that day. I had another you left choice. that day. Oh my goodness! Well, the thing is, he thought he's gonna this. He's gonna call my bluff, and I thought, what's there to worry about? I have so many friends. Somebody will take me in. Mm. So it all started off kind of like, I'll figure it out. I'll stay with my best friend for two, three years, you know. They have a big house. All my friends had big houses. Yeah. So I was like, I, they have so many rooms. I'm moving with them. And then like you go and then within a day, they're like, my mom thinks you need to go back. <laughs> uh-huh. Uh-huh. Yeah, 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 yeah. You know what I mean? And then yeah. the reality hits like, <laughs> yeah. oh shit. Is your dad calling or is he like sending messages like no, Sarna? No, he, he thought I'll come around for sure, but he was too proud. I mean, see, the believers who believe in that life, they're not they're not messing around. Yeah. They're yeah. not like they're not like, oh, she's understanding. Let me explain to her. He had had it. He thought already before my mom's death, I was like reading too much, too much voice, had too many opinions. I mean, everything that I do on a comedy stage today I yeah. would have gotten killed for in India. Yeah. The things that I say. My biggest challenge as a comedian is removing the roadblocks from my mind because for 40 years, people said to me, you can't say that. Sure. Yeah. And like yeah. suddenly it's my job now to yeah, say yeah. what comes to my mind. So how much time, like where, where's the, when you first, so you, I'm assuming you tried out a few different friends places and yeah. you realize that oh, there's, this, is not, thrown out of everywhere, this right. is not a sustainable thing. Where do you, how much time passed and then where did you end up like as like a more permanent living situation? So my sister at that, that point had gone, uh, was back in America because she lived here mm-hmm. and she said to me that why don't you, if you come to America, you can stay with me, go to school, study as much as you want. So okay. your sister's, I, I, I was going to say was the word arranged. cool. But like she's, she's very cool. But like, it's just, fa- so she was no longer tied financially to your father. No. She had her own. Oh, so she already went through like a, like a. She, yeah, she was married. She was arranged. She was living in America okay. with the man that my dad arranged her with. Yes. Is she still friendly with your father? Is the father going, are you fucking taking Zarna in? Like, is there communication here? So my dad has now passed, but he cut her off too because she took me in. Oh, that was the cut off. Yeah. He cut her off. He wow. said, you... Did she know that that would happen? She knew. But yeah. she's really stood up for me. Wow. She's like, you can't force her. See, my siblings didn't fight it. They were like, we're fine with it. This is how our world works. We're good. Yeah. I didn't want it actively. So they, my sister was my number one. Like, you're not going to force her to do anything she doesn't want to do. So that was the end of her relationship with my dad, too. This is kind of a grand thing. There's like, it feels like, I don't know how you feel about arranged because obviously your sister was in an arranged yeah. marriage and seems to have worked out well. And I other mean, siblings, my she parents said picked. Too. It was a disaster. Yeah. So there's like, there is an American belief where I'm like arranged marriages, and I've matured from this, but I still think deep down I'm like arranged marriages are bad right. because it's other people choosing for your life. Right. But I understand that's coming from like in a very American worldview. Yeah. Do right. you, if you could wash away arranged marriages, would you say it sh- it should be done no. with? No, not at all. It works for people. It works a lot of people. Sometimes I'm jealous of my sister. I have to be honest with you. Like she has a, honestly, she has a 15,000 square foot house, mm-hmm. a private plane and a dead mother-in-law. Wow. 
What did I do to my life? I built my own life. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> a you know what I got? Plane and a dead you, mother-in-law. That, that, that's you, matchmaking. <laughs> His mom is pretty sickly. Oh. Do, do you know what I got for Valentine's Day? A metro card <laughs> <laughs> and a very sweet note that said, "Don't take Ubers. Oh. <laughs> Start with the Ubers." You know. Oh. So like, yeah, yeah it. But works. you think you think people should be given the option? To yeah. participate yeah. in it or not. Absolutely. Yeah. I mean, I, of course, I'm against anybody being forced into it. Yeah. But there are plenty of people who find value in that system. And like love marriage, like uh, my kids, I'm like, I'm going to arrange you guys. I don't trust them. They're already blinded. You're swiping on Tinder for them? You're they, like, give me your Tinder. I need, I need like a Tinder for parents where we choose because my kids, you know, they love, you know how they say in America, love makes you blind. Like, no, we have the vision. Let us figure it out for you. you know? Sure. Yeah. But you, okay. So you, you got to America uh, and I remember you, the way you got in, you wrote, you had to write someone. Yeah. Oh. So... I didn't know how to get to America. You know, coming to America, not easy. It's if, especially if you're an Indian person because the, the amount of people that want to come here from India is like the line is unending. I really thought it would be a simple thing. My sister lives in America. I had heard America is a democracy. So whatever the people of America want, the government does. Yeah. yeah. In yeah. my highly oversimplified 15-year-old brain, I was like, this can't be hard. Yeah. She wants me to be there. I want to go there. Sure. And like, this should just happen. Yeah. And then, psh, nothing. And so, while you're figuring out this process, are you bouncing around houses still? Yeah, I was scout surfing. What Were you, you terrified? At, was there fear? Was there fear of, oh, I'm going to be out on the street? Or did you have I one? was out on the street a few times. I mean. Where where were you, like, where did you, do you ever stay somewhere Like, sketchy? you know, there are temples, bus stops. I mean, it's happened, yeah. And were you filled with fear? I mean, given that, like, how bad poverty could be. You know, the thing is that when you're in survival mode, you don't have time to be scared. You're, you're like, I was more scared of going back to my dad and accepting defeat. Yeah. And, and I really was hopeful that tomorrow it's going to work out. Tomorrow it's going to work. You know, when you feel like victory is around the corner, much like our lives as yeah. comedians, you're like chasing this dream. Yeah. You know, you 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 don't you don't let yourself feel too much. At least I didn't. I was in pure survival mode. So you're getting were time. you getting food when you're when you're I mean, were you making any money or were no, you No, no money. But I had like that stuff was easy to navigate because all my friends were so rich that getting food, like spending an extra night here or there was not a problem. Yeah. And in fact, you know, I now in hindsight when I reflect on where the comedy started it was that time. A lot of times I was included in things because I was funny. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It was like, oh, she wants to come, bring her. She's alone. She's got this. A lot of people had sympathy for the fact that my mom wasn't there. So when I think back to like, how did I not know that I had a comedian? But it started back then when I knew that if I made people laugh, they can include me in stuff. Well, I remember it reminds me of uh, we had an episode with Monroe Martin, uh, the comedian, and he talked about he went through the foster uh, system. Right. And he was saying yeah. that he knew if he was funnier at the dinner table, they'd be like, oh, we'll keep him for another week. Yeah. Yep. Exactly. <laughs> and you know who else has a similar story to that? Kevin Hart. Oh, yeah. I read his book before I started stand up comedy. And in his book, he talks about how his grew, he grew up in poverty with a single, no, not a single mother, but like a complicated father situation, kind of absentee, kind of whatever, right? And he talks about how his mom and him would get invited to things because he was the funny one. So he learned to be funnier and funnier so that he would get invited. To, and that's the first time I read that book and I thought, could it be that? You know what I mean? Sure, like I yeah. had a moment of like, wow, that sounds like my story. Yeah, and I, when I hear those stories, I think, oh, I have no good reason to be funny. <laughs> and thus I never truly will be. Well, never, but you too. You never I mean, you and I are similar. Yeah. At least I had a fucked up family. Yeah. You yeah. were just happy. Just happy, happy boy. What, what's, what's your f uh, funny origin story? I mean, you know, there's like... You kind of do it in your sketches where you talk about like the kid who was like... 
not cool or he was just trying to like be loved by being funny like were you a funny kid in middle school yeah yeah but it, it comes with uh, you know you're you're doing anything for a laugh or or yeah. you know what I mean like you're it's the classic you're trying to make people laugh before they make fun of you sort of sure, sort of thing sure. and right. uh, and so but I wasn't like loudly like I was not like a loud class clown but I've always been quietly sure funny. sure um but uh, I'll tell you I think that's where I like you know I have a lot of like homo erotic like talking about and i think it comes from like not wanting to be made fun of Mm -hmm. where like because i was the theater kid i went through this phase i think we've talked about it where in in like seventh or eighth grade like i went through this thing like with my joking with guys would be like hey chris how you doing Uh like it was like a joke like i'm like you didn't want to be thought that you're gay so you're like, like i'll make a joke about being yeah they'll be like so gay yeah i'll be like Oh, you think I'm gay? Yo, I'll fuck you right now. Uh-huh. I'll back up into you, mother. The middle and- school boys must have loved that. <laughs> <laughs> Those jokes. They'll be like, oh, you want to touch me? Yeah, I fucking want that. You want to hit me? That's what I like. That makes me come hard. <laughs> My God. Um, but that's like, it's that kind of thing. It's that response, I think. Yeah, I, yeah. Um, so so that, you- that sounded like it came from a place of real fear. <laughs> yeah. What you're describing, right? Yeah. 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 Well, I just think that's like my my tie to yeah. that to that kind of uh, community, and then I go to these musical theater camps, and I'd be like the the straight guy on campus. Yeah, they'd be like, "Jamarco, how do you pick up this football?" And I'd be like, "I'll show you." Yeah, <laughs> I've picked it up three times. Yeah, I I think I uh, for myself too. I always feel like when I think back, I always have memories of like making bits in my head. Of like things that I never said out loud, but I would be like, like, I think I've told you the story before, but I remember getting made fun of for not wanting to see Coyote Ugly in eighth grade. And this <laughs> someone made fun of you for not I wanting to see I was at a party and these guys were like, we're going to see Coyote Ugly. Like they Do you were know Coyote so, Ugly? They were, no. It's, it's about like a, like a bar where the women dance on the bar oh. and it's like and, strip clubby. And so we, I was in like, I was in middle school and I, they were, it was going to come out and they were, all oh, these guys were going to go see it. And then they were like. They were like, they asked me if I wanted to see it, but it was an, an it didn't seem like it was going to be a, a like, a of all, I wasn't friends with them. They were like yeah, a yeah. very, you know, the cool guy. And, uh, <laughs> I, and I said, no, I didn't want to see it. And they were like making fun of me. And I remember in my head being like, do you guys not know how the MPAA works? Like it's PG 13. We're not going to see anything <laughs> like you idiots. I've. I own Boogie Nights on DVD. Like, if I want to see stuff, I'm going to see it. Like, I just was in my head, like, doing this whole thing of, like, do, does, does this kid not know how PG-13 works? Like, there's not going to be anything that we can't see in a magazine. But you just took it. You didn't say anything. No, but... You like, were like, hey, I got a video I, of Mark always... Wahlberg's cock at home. <laughs> <laughs> I don't need these tits. <laughs> I can I'm see really Heather straight. Graham naked at any moment. Um, no, but I, the, um, the, I remember, but it was, I would, I feel like I look back and remember those kind of things that feel like yeah, a yeah, yeah. like thing in my head being like, what are you talking about? So you wrote someone eventually that got back to you. Yeah, that's right. And what position of government, what level of government were they at? It was a congressman or a senator. I'm going to keep oh. it vague because I don't have his permission. To. Sure, sure. Oh, wow. Yeah. Were yeah. they involved in your sister in Ohio? Yeah. Was that who you yeah. were writing to, Ohio? Exactly. Exa- I was writing all over America because I didn't know any better. But Ohio had an incentive because I would have come here as an international student. My sister was willing to pay for my schooling. So back then, an international student was a rare commodity. Mm. It's not how the world was today. Mm-hmm. So that locally, they had an incentive. To, All right, if she's willing to come here and pay full tuition and go to college. Do yeah. you remember when you got the letter saying you were in? Yeah. Yeah, I was shocked. I mean, I wasn't shocked that I got it because I was really believing that it's going to happen. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, when you like, you have yeah. no basis for the belief, but yeah. you just believe. But still, when it happened, that moment, I was like, this is it. This is the end of my life here. You know? I mean, I know so many, because I, I, I went to an acting school with a bunch of Australians, and they did the lottery system. Yeah. And it always seemed like a very tenuous way to live life. They were like, yeah, yeah. I hope the lottery works out yeah. next year. And I was like, fuck. And the odds were worse and worse. And that's Australia. Australia is not even as backed up as India. Like Indian people, there's the numbers that immigrate from India are so great that you could be waiting 20 years. Wow. And that's yeah. really life. Like yeah. for 20 years, you're like, it's going to happen. It's going to happen. 
So you don't know when something's going to break. When you got to America, I always think it's interesting. I see uh, sometimes more like Canadian comedians or or, uh, or just people who get their green card or whatever in America. And then they're at the state place yeah. and they have a little American flag. Yeah. And it's very patriotic. Yeah. In a time where certainly I certainly feel a lot of like fucking America. Do you feel a kind of patriotism or a love of America oh, because of this? 100%. A big reason I do the comedy that I do is because I want, especially in a post-Trump world, I feel like I'm in a position to remind people of how great they are. Mm-hmm. See, it's like... America's, You're making America great again, Well, <laughs> one might say. In my own auntie way. <laughs> but you know, like it's been so much self-hate because of all those years yeah, yeah, yeah. that like... People forget how great this place is and people are still lined up outside every consulate in every nation trying to get here. Yeah. So, and who can say that? Like, I didn't, I felt like an American person cannot say that. They're like, well, why are you standing out in a line to get in here? But isn't, think- it, isn't it probably America's fault that half those places are fucking so fucked up that they need to come here? Listen, who is to say? You know what I mean? Like, sure. in, America has never invaded India, for example. I'll give you an example, right? But, like, India's got how many problems? Like, who are we going to blame for that? Mm-hmm. At some point, you know, you have to build your own thing. And America's got its fair share of issues, no doubt. But revolution is my life, and I have to honor that fact. And that's why every set that I do, every set, ends with my audience feeling amazing. That's structurally, that's how all my sets are designed. I want mm-hmm. people, my American audience, to feel elated. That See, they- I think I'm the opposite. <laughs> I want my set to end with them feeling like you should be ashamed that you took a night off to laugh. Yeah. Did you see the 10 homeless people on the way here before you enjoyed my jokes, you selfish motherfucker? Yeah, yeah. That's my goal. That's good. Thomas. And I hope you had two drinks. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah, I hope you had two drinks. You know what I mean? Like, don't freaking leave without <laughs> yeah. having the two drinks. <laughs> so I, 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 I know there's still so many things, but I, I'm very curious about this relationship with, with your father. Yeah. Um, because I have a... I yeah, have, you have a complicated... Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I, uh, he wanted to arrange me in a marriage, and I said, no, Papa. <laughs> and uh, when was the next time you saw him after moving to America? Did you ever see him again? Mm, I'm trying to think. Uh, th- I mean, I only saw him in passing because he wasn't talking to me. Uh, Were you mad at him? Did you, no. Did you ever speak to him again before he, he passed? Not really. Re- no. No. Wow. I mean, I saw him in passing. It was a family event, but I can't remember now. It was somebody's wedding or something. Because also, once I moved here, for years, I couldn't leave and go back. The way the visa situation oh. was yeah, messed yeah, yeah. up, right. for years, I couldn't go back. So he was anger, angry and seething, and I had no way to actually be... And is he just fr- working all the time? He's yeah, just he- growing his... Were, were your siblings talking to him, any of them? My brothers who live in India even now, they were talking to him, but he cut my sister off, right? Are you because friendly with your brothers? Yeah, I'm very tight with all my siblings. Would, did you ever Did you ever go like, how's dad? Or Yeah, I would ask, but he never asked for me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because he, in his, he was that old school, like, when, you know, you're dead to me in America. It's like, real. no, he meant it. Yeah. Yeah. Like, you know, here people use that phrase, you're dead to me. Like, yeah. no, no, he, that's like, you're dead to me. Yeah, like, sure. he, like, I don't exist. Because in his mind, I had insulted him. I had brought so much shame and humiliation. And in his arrogance, he also thought, well, eventually she's going to need me to arrange her anyway. It's not like she's a beauty queen. Uh-huh. So what is she thinking? You know? Did he get remarried? Yes. And... Did when when people get remarried, did he marry like a, a widow, no. or uh, a fourteen year old? I think he, not a fourteen year old, but a woman younger than him for sure. Uh huh. Um, and you know, he. I don't think she was a widow. I don't. I don't actually know her. At Is all. she still alive? Yeah, she's alive. But I don't know her at all. Like I never lived with her nor met her actually. So was there? You know, I'm trying to like contextualize where like, you know, if my father and I never spoke again even if I had a tough relationship, it would be emotionally challenging for me. Yeah. That's what a lot of my therapy sessions would be about. Did you want, did you ever long, did you ever feel sad? Or were you, was your dad dead to you too? No, it was sad. It's still sad. 
I, but you know what makes it very sad is that my kids don't have a grandfather sure, or yeah. my kids don't have a grandma so on my side there's nobody and that's really sad that's even sadder than me not having parents do you tell them about him my dad the only way my dad talks about his father and my dad's father like left his family to start a second family so it was oh, bad wow. hit a lot of bad things right. but my dad cannot start a conversation about his father would go without going He's a fucking monster. Fucking monster. <laughs> and then will tell me the time he waited in the car while my dad fucked, you know, some, oh, some other woman. Right. Um, right on the window shield. Oh. And no, that's a joke. Oh, my but God. <laughs> <laughs> my dad, like six years old, like titties. Just, oh, my God. Uh, okay. So, uh, uh, did you go to the funeral? No. Did you want to? No. He didn't want me to. And I didn't want to. Yeah. So it was mutual. Your sister go? No. The same. It w- first of all, he died in the summer in India. So they can't hold a body. It's so hot. Yeah. By the time you get news of it in America, and you can even conceivably make it there, often the funeral has to be done. There's no place. Wait, there's no cooler to put the body in? They don't. You, not as Hindus, they don't do that <gasps> in our religion. You cremate it right away. You cremate it right away? Yeah. You that usually. A- so I believe there are ways to... To do this now, but back then, like he passed 10 or 15 years ago, 12, 13 years ago. Uh, we, most Hindus don't do that. Mm-hmm. It's my understanding. You die, you go straight to the crematorium. Mm-hmm. You know, you believe that the whole reincarnation process, if you believe in it, then it, it's very direct. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um, but I wouldn't have gone either way. It's not like I right. didn't go because of the right. Like I wouldn't have gone either way. He wouldn't have wanted me there. Like the relationship was just completely over. Yeah. And that, that's what it was. Do you think if he was alive, do you think you could have made him laugh now? Do you think if he saw you in a show that you could make him laugh? Like against his own will? Probably. Yeah? Yeah. But I'm good now. <laughs> sure, sure. You, you know wouldn't want I mean? him to see first like, year in. I've done <laughs> <laughs> I mean, parents are tough enough as it is just yeah, here in America. You know I, mean? <laughs> I do a lot of Zoom shows. I do Zoom shows for a lot of Indian uncles and aunties. Mm. Indian uncles are tough. Mm. Let me tell you. You know how the Zoom room opens? It's like a hundred of them sitting like this. <laughs> like they look at the, the camera s- with suspicion. I'm like, it's not. It's a comedy show. What are you worried about? But they're so suspicious. And you know the chat, the chat room yeah, yeah, yeah. that you can read as the performer while I'm telling jokes. She's not funny. <gasps> she's not funny. Okay, that was a little funny. I mean, it's brutal. That's wild. That that's is. Wild. That's wild. Do you address it when it happens or do you just ignore it? Well, after a while, I'm like, yeah, I just want you guys to remind you that I can read the chat. You know? <laughs> this is a little reminder. I mean, not that an Indian guy probably understands how a Zoom room chat yeah. tech works. Sure, sure. But it, it, they, and they would be like, whatever, it wasn't funny. You know, like they're brutal. It's Oh my I, God. Yeah. <laughs> and then the ultimate insult, they tweet my punchlines the next day as their own idea. Oh. Happens all the time. Happens all the time. Insane. Yeah. Are there any in India now? I mean, is it more progressive than when you were 14? You know, it's crazy. It's progressive in some ways in that the world is open. Everybody's watching Netflix. Every, like, it's all available to everybody in India. Like, nothing's hidden anymore. I mean, Facebook, Google, the whole thing. But the extreme right wing politics that we've seen here, that we saw a few years ago, you know, with the Trump, that's completely taken over the whole country in India too. The sim- a similar wave. Yeah. So it's become very religiously fundamentalist. It's become intolerant in a way that it didn't used to be. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Somehow, the last decade has brought this whole that wave happens so many in, in so, so many, many countries. countries. Do they believe in the religion, or do they just like the culture of the religion? N- neither. Neither. They believe that they need to protect their religion. So sure. it's a I lot of. Yeah. Th- there's a lot of threats from all sides. Like India is a peninsula, so it's got China is one border, Pakistan another border. Then we have Russia, right, sitting on top. Yeah, yeah. It would be we, stressful to be like between China and Russia. <laughs> yeah, so, so, it's a precarious so, place to be. Exactly. Yeah. So and now. Post this year, like until last year, people used to be like all intellectual about it. Oh, you should be open minded. Now they're even more like with Russia doing what it's doing. Yeah. People are scared. 
I mean, yeah. India is right there. Sure, sure. You know, nothing stops any of these big countries from just deciding one day. Was Trump more popular in India than Very other places? Popular. He still is with the Indian community here. What is it about Trump that appeals to? I think that. Like a lot of American people, Indians too felt like America had become too woke. They couldn't identify with what was happening on the extreme left. Which part of the wokeness bothers them? Is it like, is it the LGBT stuff? No, not all that stuff. What like, what's the woke part that rubs? It's like, you can't say this, you can't say that. Everything, everything's hurting everybody's feelings all of a sudden. Like, yeah, you know, yeah, yeah. it kind of became almost unlivable. And in some way, I think in, in comedy, we're seeing it. You just don't, you know. You know, it's it's a thing. As as I get older, there is a feeling there. There's more and more eye rolls throughout the day that I have, and I'm like, uh oh, yeah. am I becoming, yeah, yeah, becoming one of these people? It's hard. It's hard. It's and I don't know. As I, I just know as I get older, there's more and more. I'm like, okay, all right. And then I just text Russell instead. And, <laughs> mm-hmm. and I say, no, no, you're wrong here. <laughs> I say, no, no, no. Oh, I don't know what you're talking about. Um, I feel like, how? so you're raising kids now. Yeah. How old are the kids well, now? Well, raising is to be used loosely. <laughs> <laughs> you're They're coexisting. There, yeah. What are their ages? Uh, 19, 16, and 10. And the 19-year-olds at Stanford. That's right. Studying ceramics. Don't get me started. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> what? I feel like I hear about the the culture you've described in India. Yeah. And with an American bias and as a, as a liberal and as a like, do what you want. Yeah. I judge it. Yeah. I go, oh, our system's better. Right. Now that you're raising kids here, what, what do you go, oh... This was actually better in India. Yeah. Like, is there anything? How do you view your this, this whole thing? Because all I'm hearing is 14-year-old didn't want to get arranged marriage, so I had to leave her home and go to a different country. And I'm like, that's all bad. Right. No, no, it's not all bad. Like, I'd be the first. And, like, as a parent, for example, my kids want to be artists. And, no. No, no. You're going to learn math and science. But, do but you you're feel letting like the major... But also, I did, I did, no, no, she's a freshman right now. We're working on this. You know, I can't also, beat her up because also, we're, as do you feel like your position is a is, bit tenuous? Is, is 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 not as strong because you're a stand-up comedian? Yeah. Do you, do at you least the things she have, makes can hold something. They have an example of like, well, look at mom is doing. But mostly, I try to not let them find out what I do. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> mostly, wait, do know. they really not have yeah. an like? I mean, I they do. Have, I, mean, I do on internet. occasion leave my house in scrubs. Yeah, you know, confuse them a little bit. <laughs> but you do support them. No, you do. you might have that like split. I of do worry. support them, but I understand how the back home mentality. And luckily, in the world we live in today, a world filled with side hustles and this and that, I'm always reminding them. I'm like, please get a hard science or math skill. Because it will get you a job somewhere doing something and do the side hustle. That's my compromise. I would never say don't. Like my sure. daughter is actually a really good writer. Her essay about how she helped me get started in comedy is a New York Times best of 2021 college essay. Wow. Mm-hmm. So like, how am I going to deny that she's, you know what I mean? Yeah. But I'm too afraid to like, oh, just become a writer. That's a tough life. And now that I'm in comedy, like I even... We're at the cellar. We're like, yeah, but every day is a fight. Every day. Sure. I mean, it, listen, I have mixed feelings. I I had the parents who either encouraged or didn't fully care, but they let me go to college where with the scholarship, 35 grand a year that they paid for, where I was studying musical theater. Wow. And they knew I was driven. They knew I wasn't, I wasn't like a a fool. Like I I was crafty, but in a lot of ways, like it's a crazy thing. And I look back on that and I think of all the flaws in the education I got and the way they did not prepare me professionally. And there's a part of me that's like, oh, that was a mistake 
but it's always easy in hindsight to be like, that was a mistake because it also gave me a lot of skills right. that I may undervalue now that come into play probably now in the last couple of years where it's like, well, you know what? All that vocal training is the reason I can do this, that's this. So like I, I have mixed feelings. I, I don't know. Yeah. I don't know. But there are sometimes I wish I had a di another skill, yeah. but my skill would have probably been like editing. Or something in the mm -hmm, arts. Mm -hmm. Something in the arts that would... Well, listen, everybody wishes they did something different. Like, you know, I'm sure there's any number of Indian doctors out there who are like, I wish I had pursued my love for acting. Mm -hmm. that, that's like, you talk to any Indian doctor, engineer, scientist, they're going to be like, I wish I had at least given it a shot. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? So it's like, it, hindsight is like that. I said, if, if I don't make it in two years, I'm going to become a cardiologist. <laughs> It's, uh, you know, I wonder what's the latest someone's become well, a doctor. Well, you know, uh, uh, I have an interesting story. My old boss from my, one of my first jobs in New York, she uh, is this amazing woman. Like, she's this, like, kind of scary, terrifying, like, power lesbian, like, old uh -huh. old New Yorker. Like, not just, not just age-wise, but, like, just, like, has the vibe of, like, she's lived in New York her whole life, that sort of thing. But she was an actor and has these amazing, like, headshots from the 60s. Yeah. Uh, but she got to be 30 years old and was like, okay, I'm not famous. So she went back to, to become a doctor at really? 30. Yeah. And then now, like, runs several hospitals and, like, and, like oh is, God. like, this, like, very, like, successful f doctor in, in New York and uh, didn't go back till she was 30. I was like, huh, well... She was, and she said she was older. She was like, you know, when she was in residency, she was then in her late thirties, and like, yeah, 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 everyone else was much younger. But like, she, said she got to do all this sort of stuff because people would be like, oh, well, she seems a little smart. Like she just lived a little longer and stuff, so it kind of helped her out in a way. Sure, yeah. Well, good. Jan Marco, are you having finally. ideas? Are you yeah. having? A, he's listening so intently. I'm like, are we about to lose a comedian here? What? <laughs> um. So, well, I hope your daughter becomes a famous ceramicist. Is that the term? I, I wouldn't know. Ceramic artist. She'd be is the first. She'd be the first. We're like, we have to come up with a title. You're the first person <laughs> ever. Yeah, it is an interesting. I mean, there's more to it than I'm, I I don't, I just don't know. And it's funny to go to Stanford for it. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. It's not funny. It's like, what are you doing? But clearly, I don't know. You, you can be, it's the same way we're comedians, but we're like, we're both producers too. Of course. And like if you if if you study that at the same time. Yeah. And then, you know, if the ceramics doesn't work out, you build a ceramics museum or you like are involved in the well, sale, I mean, sale now, of arts. I'm or... now, after the jokes I've done about the ceramics, I've had any number of pro ceramics people hunt me down. <laughs> I love that. <laughs> and they, they remind me, they're like, you know that Tesla that people love? Like a ceramist probably designed it in a 3D studio before. So it's like there are, I, mean, oh, I think of see, like, I think, I think of, of pots. like a pot. I think like, of like little cigarette bowls. But if like. you think design, if you think like all the design applications of cool things that we like, like somebody designed the iPhone, like physically yeah, yeah, yeah. designed the thing. And it's a, there's a whole design element to it. That's a, very a ceramist. Real. I don't understand. Well, I do like that they said so, uh, probably. Probably. Yeah. There's no like hard, there's no yeah. hard evidence. They're like, well, probably <laughs> yeah. a ceramicist. Um, well, I, and what are your, what do the other si the kids want to be? Uh, well, I'm what I let them be. Uh, sure. <laughs> no, my son, my middle son is uh, he's a yogi. Oh my god. Where does he teach in New York? He he's he's yeah. And this summer he's going to be teaching for free in the park. Wow. That he's like kill a you commuter inside. for it's free. Killing me. For free. It's killing me. It's pay like, what you it can. Be a pay what you can situation, <laughs> so, please. So we we I'll did, take his class. I love yoga. We did yoga slash. You should come because we did yoga slash comedy the last two years. Oh in wow! The park. In the park, I love oh. that. So peak COVID, I was doing my own comedy shows behind the Met, uh -huh. and I had an Auntie Zarna tree, where every uh, Friday and Saturday I would like just throw a flyer out and who, whoever wanted to come come. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And he would start off the. The, the comedy with with like a 10 minute breathing That's and so stretching cool. thing. I love that yeah and we did it you know peak COVID we didn't know what was happening I thought everybody was gonna die anyway I was like let's just do some yoga I have a lot of yoga material I be and I, I don't do it very often because like in the Midwest yoga is not big enough not big yeah. I know but one of my favorites was when I got surgery uh I, I I had a hernia from CrossFit I was gonna get back to yoga and so I went to my surgeon 
and I was like, can I start doing yoga again? And I started showing him like, I was like, just so you know, like some of the poses, it would be like this and this and, and this. And then my surgeon who was Indian was like, I know what <laughs> yoga, yoga is. is. <laughs> and oh. it was like this, like it was a shocking moment. Like, and he, was, he was like, I learned it in kindergarten between like, you know, math and gastroenterology <laughs> yeah. class. And uh, it was, it was, it was such an incredible moment where like, I had f- truly forgotten in that moment, not that I would assume every Indian person knows yoga, but I think in that moment, I did not think of yoga as an Indian thing. But it's not, it's a white people thing. <laughs> now it is. It's a, Yoga was supposed to be like the hardest pose was the one where you like basically lay down and take a nap. Corpse pose was the yeah. hardest. Oh, I love yeah. corpse pose. Buckle like, up. Indian people, that was our version of yoga, okay? And then the Americans got into it, and mm-hmm. it's like hip-hop and weights and a goat and heat and, and not goat. heat. And, yeah. I mean, like some... And then, like, yoga about, Yoga was supposed to be the poor man's exercise. You wear whatever you want, and you stretch. Now it's like $300 leggings with holes in them all over that, like, you can't even wash. They're so precious, you can't even wash them. Like, you they hang them dry. So... It's become a white people thing now, yoga. And that yoga is suddenly drawing all these new Indian kids in. They're like, oh, this is the cool version. Yeah. Like they're playing Nicki Minaj and we're doing yoga. Like, do you do yoga ever? No. <laughs> no. I can't, my mind is not still enough. I'm the worst Indian. I'm the worst Indian person, like honestly. I don't do any. I don't like to cook. Sure. I don't like to cook. Thank God for like seamless. Yeah. 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 Um, well, I'm glad you said it. I was going to say. I was going to call this episode the worst Indian person. Semicolon. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, let's go to our next segment. This has got to stop. This has got to stop. I know you did your homework. Yeah, I did my homework. What's your, this has got to stop. You know, people saying we should all be good human beings and watch out for each other. <laughs> like, please. I'm going to st- challenge you on this one, but go ahead. Take, make listen, your case. It's not working, John Marco. Like, challenge me, fine. But like, look at the world we're in. I think I say, let's give it a go the other way. Wait, everybody, what does that mean? <laughs> everybody be selfish. Well, we already have genocide. Hello? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Has it worked? Oh, no, I just meant like as a rule of thumb for everyone. Okay, so yeah, give me a be, specific. So what do I need to do? Whatever. Don't worry about anything. Just worry about your own job and your own health and just stay in your own little cocoon. Stop reading about the world. You know, Stop like, reading about the world. Because reading about the world has led to the world we're in. I'm becoming my dad. I will say that I do think there's a there's a comfort that I've partaken in and many of us do where it's like, I'm going to read about the injustices of the world yes. and feel upset about yes. it. Yes. And somehow that's worth anything. Anything. No, I agree. And and I, I feel like too, what has ha- potentially happened is that you're reading so much and then you are, you're like engaging at a, like a pretty low level of everything. Yeah. yeah, that yeah. Actually right. nothing is getting, Nothing gets there because you're, you're like, I can't so help hard. with this genocide so because I, I need to read about thing. this other one. And you're like, maybe the oversaturation and overeducation of like tr- of horrible things happening is leading to people actually taking less action because they're reading so much and then they feel helpless, yeah. which is is a, a universal but feeling. They're I feel so like right exhausted now. reading it that they don't have any energy to do anything about it. You know what I mean? Sure. If it, the, the emotional I, exhaustion of reading all this news. Do you ever refresh your news and you're like, I can't read one more thing about this. Well, yeah. I think it's worse. I think it's that it's not like refreshing the news. It's like it's like you're on your social things and people are commenting, sharing the things. So you're already getting a version through an opinion of like people that you follow. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. it's almost like. You know, even if I'm not going on like the New York Times or, or any of the news, it's things. everywhere. Yeah, it's everywhere. Um, but so, yeah, I don't know. So what else? I'm just trying to fully understand <laughs> how to incorporate your philosophy into my life. <laughs> what I I I guess the simplest way to say it is just you know be selfish. It's fine. Like the whole selfless movement I don't know hasn't if you really need to caught John Marco Sarais. <laughs> I don't. <laughs> I don't think you're selfish, but I. I uh, no, yeah. This comes from a place of some despair and hopelessness. I feel like uh-huh. us telling people how to live in some way has not mm. worked. Yeah, sure. Okay. In the and and that that may be my one mild, very gentle criticism of America in general. Like they've invaded countries under this idea that that those countries want to be American. 
Mm. Yeah. So we're going to leave them with a version of America that they're going to implement. And like none of that seems to have really, you know. We did not yeah. f- for sure. Yeah. So I think great. I'll do it. <laughs> Sounds good. Everybody focus on your own job for a minute and like a bit help, you know, get yourself off of social media and just focus in your own little community for a minute. I like that. I like that. Right? I like focus that. on your, Definitely your own like, little community. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Plant your own little tree. One tree. Don't try to save 10 million. Of it. Just plant one tree. Okay. Okay. I like this I like this, is, I like, this, I like this, this in degree. I always think just like, it's just constantly, especially in New York. I'm like, I'm going to go donate to something as I pass. Yeah. Homeless people and a disastrous <laughs> like. Yeah. Uh, it's like, well, there's a lot of help that needs to be done here. Yeah. Okay. So we did a compromise. So I got too negative for block. you. Like that's the downside. We went yeah. the lowest we could go. Is <laughs> we that went the to lowest? Full nihilism. Of, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Don't worry about anyone else. <laughs> oh, I was just. Uh, never mind. It's too depressing. I was just like. You I know what? I that have guy that set himself on fire in front of the Supreme Court this past week. <laughs> what was to, like, that? To like to against like global warming global and like warming. I was like no someone, I, someone in front of the Supreme yeah, Court yeah, and, I, and yeah. it was uh, well, it, I they did two articles. Yes. Yeah. Well, I read all this. I it really is. I mean, it's truly. It's horrifying just to think that did he think it would do something? Yeah. And people were like, mm, we don't we don't care. Well, did you get it on video? Did you make it into a TikTok with music is like, like what's, baby you're a fire? What's upsetting you is work. like I'm like I don't know I don't even know how many people would have to do that at once for it someone to even take t- for us no. to take if action they, every day they did one more each time to see what would move the needle two people set themselves on fire I mean it's three oh, no it's I upsetting. think on it, it can, grotesque as it is uh, until the person dies it's not gonna make the news Ooh, he, did no, he did die so that's why it made the news and that's sure, why we're talking sure. about it yeah. because if they just did it and then the fire was put out they're like alright well you know if okay. I did it it would definitely be like a lighter and be like I'm gonna, f- I'm gonna run my finger over it really fast <laughs> I'm going to run it over two times if you don't fix global warming. I, well, 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 One, well, two, three. Well. I do not want to be set on fire. But but I have, oh. can I just, can I give you an example that just came to my mind that's Please. very current yes. about what I'm saying? The whole mask debate, right? Wear the mask, don't wear the mask. I hate it. I don't hate it. At this point, I'm like, look, if you are scared and nervous, immunocompromised, whatever your situation is, you wear three masks. Mm. Protect yourself. Because the world is like, they're going to do what they're going to do. You know? Yes. I've kind of moved on from that now. I I don't know what solution there is. Well, there is a reality with comedy. And I feel like I sped up a lot more than my friends, even more the conservative ones where I was in comedy clubs. So I was like, it's... I'm there. Yeah. I'm I'm seeing people. I'm selling merch. And... We're in a basement. We're in a basement. (laughs) With no ventilation. Yeah. And I definitely... It definitely feels uncomfortable. I'm sure if you're like on a plane and suddenly the pod's like, take them off, baby, as you're on the plane. That kind of sucks. Yeah. That's pretty sudden. And people have criticized like the fact that that happened. But I... Compared to the rest of Twitter, I was just like... Some people on Twitter were like, how dare you take off these masks on these planes? And I was pretty jazzed. Yeah. To take my mask off on my plane. Yeah. And it also, you, you started sounding like, you basically, I sounded like Republicans did like a year and a half ago. Where I'd be like, I've been on the plane, we're all eating our food for an hour long on the plane, eating yeah. one almond at a time. So let's not pretend that at least half this mask wasn't, was flight wasn't maskless already. Right. Yeah, there's definitely like, you rewrite like the 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 logic of, of the masks sometimes where you're like, where you're like, it came off at all, it, you're done. You're all dead. Do you yeah, know what yeah, I mean? Like, yeah. I, like, in theory, you're like, there's a thing where uh, sometimes it, it just doesn't make sense to me that we were... I think they're definitely, especially with the masks, there's some people are like, let's keep the masks on forever. It helps people. And I'm like, no. no. I'm no. like, no, that's not going to happen. There's also, for me, my nihilistic way, and I'm like, well, it's over. You... You at a certain point you can't just tell everybody what to do forever. These masks are eventually coming off. You can wear it as long as you want. You can wear it as long well, as you that's want. That's what I'm saying. But yeah. people are not can, gonna be behind this for forever. You yeah. can be selfish about that. Like in my mind, like whatever your view is, forget the view. Don't stop trying to convert people. You walk around with two masks on. I don't care. I'm glad you feel this way because I tested positive for COVID right before this <laughs> podcast. And I said, well, that's their business. Um, <laughs> let's go to our final segment. You better count your blessing. You better count your blessing, Russell. Yes. 
course. Um, yeah, so this last Uncle Function show, um, uh, I got like uh, uh, I, I our sketch team, Uncle our Function. sketch team. Um, you really assume everyone knows. Oh, sorry, like Uncle our Function. sketch team, Uncle Function. Um, uh, I ended up getting being able to film a short thing in a little movie uh, this weekend because. This casting director was at one of our shows, and they needed a different a, casting director. A different casting director than oh this my other God. thing. Not yeah. a casting agent. No, not a <laughs> casting agent. Um, but it was nice. It was a nice little thing to like randomly get a phone call, being like, "Can you film this thing tomorrow?" Uh, just a last minute thing, a couple lines. Um, but uh, it was very fun, so cool little thing. And I, I didn't even know this person was at the shoot uh, or yeah. at the at the um, and that's show. how that's how that, that that's part of the uh, relationship to live entertainment that you want to happen where live entertainment doesn't pay a lot at least yeah. in New York if you're not headlining or things like that but especially in sketch comedy and improv part of the agreement was like we'll put on good live entertainment and hopefully industry will yeah. be there and it's so for it to happen yeah well and he called and he said he said uh, is this um is this Russell and I said yeah and he goes he goes is this Uncle Function Russell. And I said, yeah. And then what if I, you're like, no, let me get. And then I felt like I had, like I, I felt so sad that I did this. But then I go, just to confirm, because then then we was asking about it, and I said, yes, I could do it. Blah blah. blah. We figure out all the logistics, and then I go just to confirm uh, the big one. <laughs> like I, I I was like in my head, I was like, what if he had the wrong name? I was like, and then I showed up on set, and there was like a thing. But anyways, it was all fine. That's um, so. I know. I well, felt so did, bad that then I did. Then it'd be good. You'd I be know. stuck. <laughs> <laughs> and they'd, they'd be like, the big, it, well, just to confirm, it'd be the like, one. it'd be like the yeah. the fitness coach at yeah. like, <laughs> and they're like, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, you, have, you know, the story about Ryan Gosling prepared for a role, and he thought like the character, he's like, this character should be like fat, and so he he would eat like he was eating Haagen Dazs ice cream for every meal, and then he showed up to set, and the director was like, what are you, you doing? No, and fired him. <gasps> and so I just imagine just like putting on like significant weight on yeah, purpose. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um. Well, that's really cool. I didn't yeah. even hear about this. I, did, I, I, I it happened so quick. It happened. They called me Saturday. I filmed it yesterday. Um, uh, I'm trying to figure out my blessing. That's why I'm stalling. But I'm excited. And you also you got that other callback. We're hoping, fingers crossed. No, for no, that. I didn't get it. I heard, yeah, I know. Yeah, okay. And um, <laughs> <laughs> uh, Zarna, do you have a blessing? I have many. Uh, I have three sure. literal blessings. My kids, mm. and you know why they're great? Because I believe in child labor. <sighs> What labor are they doing for you right running now? Running my TikTok. Really? Oh. Yeah. Oh. That's great See to have that? young people oh, running TikTok. Running my YouTube account, running my Instagram. Oh, to See? have a young person do that. See how I was like, who came up with like no child labor? No. Yeah. Put them to work. Yeah, I do think there's something about like child labor laws. <laughs> there's just something about like, well, it's okay if a kid does a little bit of work. A Man, lot. if I had a kid. I mean, when school started, like pandemic was great for me. Yeah. They were around the whole, I was like, enough with the classroom. Come here. Yeah. Now they're in school, whatever. Sure. You know. That's why people say, do you want a kid? I'm like, well, no, but I want an assistant. Mm. Yeah. So maybe I can. Or baby content. You know, that stuff goes wild. Oh, baby you content. Know. You know what's so funny though? My mom, she's like, I hate. Who's, she's not even like a comedy person per se, but she watches now and then. She's like, I hate when comedians talk about their kids. Oh my like God. Like for her, when when comedians just talk about their kids, like it rubs her the wrong way. And I think it's because she never wanted to be a mom. Yeah. yeah. Um, I got, I'm trying to think of a blessing. I, I feel like some, some decent things happened. Oh, fuck. I'm coming up blank. I, uh, I, there's, I, had, I saw a friend today, my friend Alice Grinling. Who you know, Alice yeah. Grinling. Oh, yeah, yeah. And uh, uh, yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll make it for her. She's my, like when I, tr uh, about once a week, I call her and for an hour, she she lets me uh, just say jokes and uh, see if she laughs at any of them. Oh my God, and that's, that's my amazing. Open mic. Yeah. That's your open mic? And it's rare, it's like, it's rare to find people who are willing to do that. Yeah. And she's got a lower bar for the comedy. Which is like, it's good for new stuff because you get to be like, oh, there's something, something there. Something there, right. As opposed to my mom, who every time they make a mistake <laughs> to test out a joke on my mom, and her response to every single one is, nah, it's not your best. And I'm like, okay, well, <laughs> only only one can be the best. So I just need something. Yeah. Yeah. And once in a while, she'll laugh really hard. Like the ones she really laughs at, bomb every time. Yeah. The ones that crush with her, for whatever reason, bomb every bomb. time. But if it's like a medium laugh, I'm like, something might be there. Something. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So I'm very thankful to her for that help. 
And uh, uh, yeah, she doesn't listen to the podcast, so this is wasted. <laughs> Um, <laughs> or she might just start listening now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. When her friends tag her, they're like, "Do you hear what she said about you?" Ooh, I like that. Mm. Um, so, so this is coming up May tenth. Is there anything you want to plug? Um, I'm going to be in Oklahoma. Um, I'm going there this weekend. You are? Where are you going? Uh, Bricktown. Oh, Bricktown, great club, yeah. great chain. I'm going to uh, Looney Bin, but I know okay. the chain that yeah. does Bricktown. So Bricktown. Um, Oklahoma City, then Fayetteville, Arkansas. Okay. And then uh, and then Chicago, Laugh Factory. That's great. Yeah. What are you doing at Laugh Factory? I have my, my show on May 15th. That's fantastic. Yeah. What's so funny is like, I mean, this is just like annoying comedian and stuff because we have the same agent now. I'm like, oh, really? They have it in there. Mm-hmm. All right. I got to call them. Say, why the fuck haven't I? Yeah. Uh, but that's really very, Laugh Factory call is fantastic. Like, uh, hey, I just noticed, you know. Hey, I just noticed yeah. that uh, hear about Zarna it did this, effect, so yeah. what the fuck. Um, I, I, I love Innovative. My, love. T- my touring, my touring. that's another shout out, Matt Bourne, best no. touring agent around. Man. Okay, okay, whatever, second to Christina Shams. <laughs> hey, Christina uh, yeah, Shams. Yeah, yeah. Christina Shams, get me into three E's comedy club. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so I am going to be uh, Boston, May 12th. I'm doing something called The Jar. Where the, if you oh, go, yeah. you have to go with like a group. Yeah, It's mm-hmm. a very like a social experiment type thing. Mm-hmm. Um, then I'm going to be a Helium St. Louis, May 13th, May 14th. Uh, weekend after that, uh, I'm here a little, but I'm headlining uh, Atlantic City Comedy Club, May 21st. And then weekend after that, I'm at Mohegan Sun for the weekend. And then Rogue Island Comedy Festival in Rhode Island. And then, of course, you know, the silver lining, the sister show to this podcast, is the first Sunday of every month at Sesh comedy club this next one will be june 5th 8 p.m uh it's me doing an hour with two people in between mixing it up and if we get enough people there eventually it's starting to grow but we will then start doing maybe a monthly live podcast recording with just russell daniels and i'll be in the audience oh my god it'll be russell for an hour just <laughs> what riffing. a nightmare you'll have a newspaper up there just, and just pretending be to be an insurance salesman i was good at the insurance salesman <laughs> that uh, was very improv. good um oh i have a pitch or i have a pitch i have a plug uh may 10th you said this comes out yeah yeah, yeah. okay saturday may 14th uh uncle function asylum nyc Ooh. without john marco but the rest of us will be there what time 7 30 p.m okay yeah go get tickets to that and um otherwise uh whether whether it's an arranged marriage or a regular marriage love like a knife will always dull this is oh. the downside. This just got philosophical. That's kind of poetic, I think. Yeah. That's kind of a metaphor out of nowhere. Um, There's a tweet. There's a viral tweet. Love dolls like a knife.